Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our C101CC and we're looking at ADF navigation. So I'm going to head out to the map here. So ADF navigation automatic direction finding allows us to navigate to a radio beacon that has transmitting radio data. This radio beacon will be called a NDB, a non-directional beacon. For an example of what a non-directional beacon looks like on the map, we're going to zoom in and find one here. Here is a non-directional beacon. Um, and it is transmitting in the kilohertz range, 265.00 kilohertz with a code name of D. Oh, okay. Now, there are lots of different types of radio stations. And first of all, let's just quickly show the difference. This is ADF in kilohertz range. This is an NDB, okay. Now we're going to quickly have a look and just I scan, I scan. Um, here is another radio transmitter, another omnidirectional radio transmitter. It is not an ADF. This is a VOR with DME. Um, we can tell that because it's got a hexagon inside a square. We're, we're going to discover that in a different tutorial, so don't worry about what that is now. Uh, next, if we zoom out here, Abu Dhabi, we can see we've got a different thing here. This is a VOR without DME, okay? Right, so we're going to go to our ADF. Our ADF is a transmitter that is transmitting radio signals omnidirection constantly on that frequency with coded information in the signal. The coded information is this chap here, the code word or code name DO. What we can use is our ADF direction finding equipment on our aircraft to find an azimuth to this. Now we cannot, this is a passive system only, we cannot in any way communicate with this system and we cannot find any range. We can only find an azimuth. So what we can do is direct our aircraft or get it to direct us to this and this will be placed at a strategic position at an airfield or you know something of interest and then we can navigate to it. So what we're going to do next is go and have a look in the cockpit of the aircraft to look at our ADF equipment. Okay so we're in the cockpit now, we're going to look at our gear. So this is our ADF panel obviously. So here is, we get two stations that we can monitor um, with ADF. In fact, we should explain that first. Mo a lot of planes have only one ability to monitor one ADF station. This has two. You can see there's one, there's the secondary. The reason for that is that uh, ADF is can as well be used for general navigation. It can be actually used for approach and landing. If that were the case, you'd have two NDBs at an airport, so in this case you'd have an inner, inner and outer, we don't have any on Persian Gulf that I'm aware of, but you would have an inner one mile from the threshold and an outer two miles from the threshold and you would s navigate to the outer, then you would switch to the other station that you're monitoring which is inner with the click of a button and then you can fly from the outer to the inner to the threshold. We're not going to do that because A, I actually can't do it and B, we've got n um, no way of doing it. So we're just going to do a general navigation to one NDB here, but I just wanted to let you know that's why we've got the ability to, to monitor two stations, okay? So this shows the frequency of your primary, this shows the frequency of your secondary, and we're working in kilohertz here. Uh, this knob switches between primary and secondary, so the arrow is now pointing to secondary, the arrow is now pointing to primary. We've got our tone on and off, whether or not we want to listen to the information that's been transmitted on the radio waves from the NDB, which we'll go over, I'll go over in a bit. Next, we've got a stack of a pyramid stack here that we can use to change this frequency and a pyramid stack for that frequency, which we'll go over. A master mode, off antenna, ADF test. Off is off, test is test. Antenna is a mode best suited for listening to the information transmitted on the radio. ADF is the mode best suited for getting the actual direction information, the azimuth direction, from the radio signal. And we've got our gain here, which I believe is our volume, which we can change with mouse scroll left and right. So the first thing we're going to do is tune into our frequency on primary. So that is 265. Sorry about my screen shaking around. It's my tracker. I was just not very good. We want 265 kilohertz. Okay, so we're going to we change the middle digit by uh, mouse scroll left and right. So that's six. We then use, hold the right, this is a bit awkward, but hold the right mouse button down and you scroll wheel and we can get to the, uh, you know what I'm saying, the, the next digit. And uh, left click, hold down and mouse scroll wheel, we can use this digit. So we've now got 265, we're tuned in. We're going to turn our tone on. So the next thing I'd like to show is that we need to turn the order, uh, the, the the sound side of the ADF on. Now it's controlled in the audio panel here. We need to pull this button out. To pull this button out, press left click on it. It makes a tiny difference as you can see there. And then we're going to use mouse scroll wheel to turn up the balance for the ADF. Next we're going to turn on master volume. It's a very quiet signal so we need to turn master volume up to get this to work. 
uh, with scroll wheel. Next, we're going to want to turn our gain up to maximum. Just everything, whack it up to maximum, basically. Oh, and there you can hear it. It's the same with a lot of planes. A10C completely fooled me. Um, be, uh, had the same problem. You need to turn everything up to maximum, otherwise you just can't hear anything. What you can hear now is Morse code. Been make sure your tone here is on. Uh, we're getting now Morse code uh, being sent to us that is um, coded on the omnidirectional radio signal. So what I'm going to do now is to jump into Google. In fact, I'm going to get Stahl to do this. Stahl, can you jump into a Google Morse code translator and translate our code, which is DO, into Morse code? And let me know, please. Yeah, well, I did. Uh, DO in Morse code is long, short, short, long, long, long. Long, short, short, long, long, long. Okay, we're going to listen to the next cycle of Morse code. Stand by. Long, short, short, long, long, long. That is DO. That's how we've confirmed that we're on the correct station. And that's a practice that should be done to confirm that we're on the right station. Next, we're going to turn on our actual ADF direction finding. So make sure we're onto ADF, which we are there. Okay, now we're going to move over to the instruments that we're going to be using. We're going to be using two instruments. We're going to be using our radio compass here and our HSI here. Now, on our radio compass, we have a radio needle that's pointing the direction of that radio transmitter the ndv and it's telling us it's at 300 or thereabouts which is essentially behind us so i'm going the wrong way which is a bit annoying uh, we can also have this on our hsi if we click here we can go from nav to adf adf is now being trans uh, shown by this purple needle on our hsi and it obviously matches with that so we know we've got to turn around so the next thing we're going to do is turn around now as you'll notice on the HSI there's no distance distance is blank because as we talked about ADF does not have distance information only VOR does which has distance measuring equipment so we're turning now now this needle can fluctuate and it can be a bit funny when you're rolling your aircraft so you just have to be a bit patient with it I think you're speaking not all of VOR has and TACAN does have it as well just okay fine TACAN has it as well and yes VOR only has it if you have a DME on the transmitter and in the um, aircraft. Anyway, let's stop boring the people. Right, now you can see that we are heading towards the signal on the HSI and the radio compass. Yes, it goes a bit wonky sometimes, like you just saw there. Uh, you just have to bear with it. Uh, and you can see out the cockpit, out of interest, that, uh, yeah, it is right on the edge of that airport, obviously. The only way we can range this is basically when we fly over the top of the station. At that point, the needle will basically twiddle around from in front of us to behind us. That's how we know where we're over the top of the station. Also, if it was an inner or an outer beacon or a middle beacon, um, like we talked about earlier, you would also get a marker, a marker light show up. You've got the markers here, inner, outer, and I'm not sure which one's which actually, but um, you would show those marker beacons um, that would be glowing when you went over one of those beacons. But this is not an inner or an outer. Right, I need to concentrate now. It's inner center and outer from top to bottom. Roger, inner center and outer. I was a little bit high for this, but it shows that it can work at pretty much any altitude. Regards to range, it can be all the way up to about 100 miles, as long as you are high enough, because you have to uh, go over the Earth's curvature, obviously. Right, you can see we're still following our needle. We're about to die because we're going too fast, so I better level out and put my air brakes out. And the needle will start turning very shortly and becoming inaccurate. And it's starting, no, just being a little bit wobbly because of my change in pitch. It's fine. Still on the right trajectory. And I think it's turning now. It's turning. Yep, now look at that. That means that we are now heading over the beacon. And we've gone past it. And the beacon is now behind us. We look on our map we can say we've literally headed right over that beacon and that's that anything you want to add to ADF stall well, I mean technically I guess there would be one option to actually uh, ranging yourself to that beacon that is if you had a second beacon uh, on the second ADF and check the heading towards that you could triangulate it on a map but that is a little bit of effort that is a little bit of effort. That regards that needs Pythagoras and trigonometry style. Right. Other than that, uh, go and get in your C101 and do some ADFing and have fun. I hope that helps, and see you later.